Uh, achieving the dream is is probably the best thing I've seen happen to higher education in the last number of decades, actually. That uh, it really has given us greater focus on using data to make better decisions on how to support our students so that they can actually achieve their dream, so that they can be successful, they can complete what they start. And uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things that's, that was kind of like a tipping point because for so long we had spent so much time on access, 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 and how do we get more students in through the door, and uh, not how did we help them get out the back door with, with an, a degree in hand or a certificate. And so through the use of data, better understanding what those uh, um, kind of momentum points are in students' pathways, uh, and still we act, until we actually looked at the data, uh, we didn't truly understand where we needed to focus our resources and our attention uh, to help make a student success um, the end goal. Uh, I know you had success at El Paso. How is the, the work different? What are the momentum points that you're focusing on at, at Austin Community College? You know, it's the whole continuum of the student's uh, pathway. And so it, it, it I'll give you an example. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we had a presentation. We had a, a student uh, focus panel. And so we had students who began their uh, pathway in higher education at Austin Community College who started in adult basic education and who had dropped out in middle school and now had gone through life and had some hard challenges in life and now recognized she had to go back to school. And so going back and starting through adult basic education and going, getting her skills up to a level to pass the GED and then going into college level courses and be, becoming successful because of that preparation uh, and that pathway that's, that's afforded her um, is, a, is a, one example. Another student that we had there is a 14 year old who is attending an early college high school in Austin and a first generation. Uh, low-income family and no expectation that he would ever go to college um, you know, you know it's just it's not in the it, not in their cards and to, to be able to provide the opportunities with some incentives for students to see that there is a pathway for them individually um, you know that specifically made for them that they can be successful uh, is just awe-inspiring and then at the other end we had uh, the mother of, of six children, and uh, her children have grown up. Uh, they're either in college or out of college, and she said, it's my turn. And so she went back to college, and actually she got an, an associate degree in nursing, and, and is now a nurse in a hospital. So to see all of those multiple pathways um, for entry into higher education, but with a specific way to be successful, an individualized plan for each one of them to be successful mm -hmm. um, is fantastic. I'll, I'll give you probably three at Austin Community College as an example, um, but one of them is putting data in the hands of faculty so that faculty, developing faculty coaches, so they feel comfortable at looking at the data for their specific discipline area. And then going back and learning how to use that data, but also how to, you know, communicating with their peer faculty members, both full-time and adjunct faculty, and saying, you know, let's let's look at this for our discipline, and how can what do we need to do a little bit differently to get better results? And so all of a sudden you've got this this conversation that's spreading among faculty, and that's where that's where you really need it to happen. You need those conversations to happen there. Um, just came from a, a session where one of our um, staff members was given a presentation uh, on online orientation and to see the difference that online orientation can have if it's done right um, to student persistence and student success coming back uh, especially for first time in college students and if you look at online orientation and the way it was developed um, as a part of achieving the dream is we are specifically seeing um, African-American males and Hispanic males after receiving mandatory online orientation are doing so much better. I mean, it, its persistence rate jumped from 
like in the 65% range to 85% to 90% persistence from semester to semester. And so, you know, doing things like that, uh, finding out better ways to deliver, uh, whether it's uh, advising and orientation or whether it's the delivery of instruction. Leaders um, come in all sizes and shapes and uh, at all levels within an organization and you don't have to have a title to be a leader, um, but you have to have a desire to make a difference. And so giving, giving the tools necessary through th such things as um, professional development. Uh, we have a leadership development academy specifically designed for um, employees within the organization, faculty and staff who want to become leaders to get, have a pathway to develop the skill sets necessary to do that. But also for those who are in leadership positions to require some additional skills necessary to be successful. You know, beginning with Achieving the Dream, they, they really created a new dialogue that took the focus off of access and really moved the focus. It, you know, it's still on access too, but moved the focus to be more comprehensive too. You know, how do we get students to complete what they start? How do we get them to be successful? And so, which has led to more in-depth conversations on developmental education, how we deliver developmental education, how we orient students. Um, you know, as Kay McClenney often says, you know, students don't do optional. And, and looking at mandatory programs, which might be uh, in student success courses and requiring them to take those. Uh, and in the relationship K-16. So it, it's, it also stimulated that conversation that forced many of us to say, we can't wait for a student to come to the community college. We've got to work more closely with our, our K-12 partners. And if we really want smooth transition to the university, we have to work more closely with our university partners. So it has really created this expansive dialogue, uh, K-16. Uh, and forced us, I think, through the use of data to find better ways to communicate and to enhance um, the pathways for students uh, in you know, school districts, uh, whether it's through early testing uh, of college placement exams so that they understand what's necessary, and, so, and, and working in collaboration with K-12 to provide some kind of intervention strategies so that when they do graduate from high school, they are college ready. Did you foresee that you would be committing this much of your life to community college? And what, what brought you originally to, to be excited about this area of education? Oh, to the community college in yeah, general? Personally, yeah. Oh, per um, probably it dates back to when I graduated from high school. My first experience in higher education was with a community college. Attending an, a community college my very first year and uh, that probably was the, uh, for me, that was my tipping point in higher education. Um, that I had some of the, the most fantastic faculty members who um, invested in me personally um, and showed that they cared whether or not I was successful or not. And that stayed with me. Uh, and so I have been a, a fan of community colleges since that, that first day that I stepped foot in class. Um, and is, have been fortunate enough to get back in to community college uh, as an administrator and have been there for about the last uh, 30 years and love it. That's great. Well, that really comes across. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.